Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Cage Talk. Remember, every Thursday, another fighter, another story. Today, um, I have a mixed martial artist and a kickboxer who competed in K1, UFC, World Fighting Alliance, Maximum Fighting Championship, Shuto, King of the Cage, where he was super heavyweight. We have, ladies and gentlemen, Marvin, the Beastman, Eastman. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. Most definitely. <laughs> I, love, I love that nickname, man. That that's uh, it just it just it flows perfectly, man. I, I love it. How how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. Now my my mentor gave me that name. Uh, okay. So he just told me uh, it's John Lewis, and he just told me like one day he just walked up to me and it's like you you need a nickname. Uh, <laughs> your name is gonna be Marvin the Beastman. He's been that's your name, and he wouldn't call me anything else but Beastman. So I was like, what? So, whatever. Okay, so it's stuck. It's stuck, and it's and it's, and it's clever, and it's good. It goes with your last name, and, and I love it. I, I love hearing uh, yeah. the nicknames. You know, some people have right. really good, interesting nicknames, and and stuff how they got it and stuff. Some people are just like, no, nah, they just gave it to me. I'm like, okay, and but yeah. uh, that that fits you well, man. It fits you fits you well. So I hear. You. I appreciate it. I appreciate no, it. No problem, man. Let let's um. Uh, the first thing that comes to, to mind when, I, when I, I watched you fight back in the day, I mean, again, you were incredible uh, in kickboxing, and then you went into uh, MMA as well, and you did. But that one fight, I know it's probably going to bring you back bad memories, but I'm sorry. It's just it's one of the things that I, I, I remember because I remember watching when I was little. I'm like, holy hell, was the Vitor Belfort that cut on top of your head? Yeah. I mean, that was – that was that was the, probably the scariest thing I've seen when I was watching when I was watching when I was little, man. Um, but other than that, man, you had some some great battles and stuff, and would love to hear how you how did you get started in, in combat sports? What was the first thing that you got introduced to? Was there any role models whatsoever when uh, you were little that you kind of looked up to? How did it start, man? Nah, man, I uh, I, uh, nah. <laughs> I wrestled. I wrestled and I played football, um, Pop Warner, and uh, all the way through junior high school, high school. But I started wrestling when I was uh, eight. And uh, my brother, my older brother, just passed away. He's been going, been going now almost coming on two years. Uh, he started me wrestling. And um, hey, Andre, sorry. Um, Chill out, dude. Uh, so he started me out wrestling at eight, man, and we wrestled in California and um, we wrestled all over California. Um, my first year wrestling, I won a California State Championship uh, in uh, in freestyle. So, um, but it was basically just uh, mimicking, you know, and I only knew single leg, a double leg, and uh, Body slam, and that's what he used to call me, the body slammer, because I just picked the shoot. You know, my, my, I always had a pretty penetrating shot. And um, mm-hmm. so I just would pick people up, slam them, put them, take them to the back, and pin them. So, and so my background really is is wrestling. I've wrestled and played football. So, um, yes, sir. all the way through um, high school and, and won a California state championship. I didn't lose a match my last year. And, in, the, in high school. So um, that's the basis. Um, but I played football and I wrestled equally and I did just as good as in, in football as I did in wrestling. So, um, but that's, that's the basis, you know, um, gotcha. you know, that's, that's my foundation, you know, that's where I started. from. Now you were, you also played, um, I mean, I'm kind of going off topic, but just, I mean, you kept on mentioning football and stuff like that. What position you played? And you also played in the CFL, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I played uh, – I went undefeated in wrestling my last year in California. I went 42-0. and 0, and uh, But also was uh, rushed for 1,400 yards playing football. So – and I made all, all Northern California and – all the, all the stuff, all the accolades in California, um, except I was a Prop 48. So, um, Prop 
58 was where you were partial qualifier. You, okay. you know, you could get into school and, uh, but, uh, you would lose one year of eligibility, you know? So, um, a lot of schools don't want to recruit you. They don't want you to be able to come for three years. They want you to be there for four. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, normally it takes you four to five years to get a, a bachelor's degree anyway. So kind of a stupid rule to put somebody who didn't qualify and only give them three years to complete a degree, you know? Yeah. That's for somebody who actually is qualified, you know? So it's a dumb rule. So I ended up saying, forget it. And, um, went the junior college route. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I didn't, uh, where I was going to go was, uh, Garden City by way of either right from there to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State to wrestle or, um, stay home and play football. Mm -hmm. And I got out, out there in Garden City and started looking around all this corn and all this other kind of stuff, man, and got (laughs) homesick. I said, man, I'm going to stay in California. So I went ahead and just hung out my wrestling shoes and, um, I went to uh, a powerhouse junior college in, in, in California where I'm from. So, okay. and I just said, I'm playing football. So then that's basically where it started. Gotcha. Gotcha. And um, what made you, um, now were you playing uh, after that you played football and then you went to uh, kickboxing and then mixed martial arts or was it vice versa? Oh, I, was, played, I, I, I played at Merced college. Okay. And, uh, made all Northern California and made all American before I, I uh, finished there. And uh, I committed to the University of Washington. And uh, one of my buddies that uh, that I work with, um, he played football, he's from Michigan. He just decided he wanted to take a trip to Las Vegas to see this trip, you know? And I was like, I'm going to, he's like, man, come with me to Vegas, man. Let's just kick it, just go on the strip and kick it. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm already going to Washington. so. Okay, you know, right there, the difference yeah. and you know that's a long thing to do you know and, and i went out there and they take you to the strip and take you to the strip clubs and give you money and do all that kind of stuff they were doing all this stuff everything that they said every every school was doing it it was a powerhouse um yeah and lo and behold i ended up going to a basketball school instead of a, a traditionally football school um and lo and behold, University of Washington won a national championship that year. So Damn. that would have been, you yeah. know, <laughs> right where I would have went. So, so, um, and I played my couple of years and I tore up my knee there. Um, I ended up signing with a Canadian team, uh, Calgary Stampeders, and was there through camp and ended up, ended up getting cut mid season. And then the next year, I re signed with another team. And uh, was there all the way through the season, mid season, and ended up getting cut again. I said, forget it, I'm just going back to school. So mm-hmm. I uh, worked out for the Raiders right before I uh, went back to school okay. and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, and I heard nothing back. So I was like, forget it. So I went ahead and started going to school. And midway through school, um, this running back, Napoleon. Kaufman or something like that blew out his knee on TV. I was actually at this athletic club watching the game mm-hmm. and I watched the dude blow out his knee. I was like, oh man, I'm working, working. The next day we get a call and it's like somebody from the Raiders call. I'm like, man, stop playing. I thought my my manager was playing. So seriously, somebody called from the Raiders and he named the, the general manager of the Raiders. I was like, damn, he wouldn't know mm-hmm. who yeah. it was. So they offered me a practice roster contract, but I was past the drop date. So if I left, it was like $8,000, $10,000 a week. But okay. if I would have dropped, if I would have left, I would have had five Fs because I was already past the drop date. Gotcha. So it was either take the money, which I could have used, and uh, go even be on the squad just mm-hmm. even because practice roster – goals get pulled right up to you know and um I said forget it man five F's I'll never get my degree so I just declined it and so then I said, forget it stayed in school and then I just started started 
working at the penitentiary when I because I got my degree in criminal justice. Yes, sir. Um, so and I started wrestling again, um, just doing freestyle wrestling, California here and there and stuff like that in '95, '96, and uh, and then I think I seen uh, the UFC. Uh, when it first came out, it was just mixed martial arts. Like, Man, this is kind of cool, you know. Mm -hmm. I would like to do that, but I don't have no striking background. So, uh, because it was different martial arts styles against each other, you know, and just yeah. wrestling, you know, you know I, I don't know how to strike. So, um, they had a Gracie Jiu Jitsu school here and they wanted $50 per session and they had 200 sessions on the wall. I was like, man, that's $10,000 per session. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a broke, barely finishing college, college mm -hmm. student. I can't afford $50 per session. And uh, so right across the street, it was a Muay Thai center, Master Tidy's Muay Thai. So uh, I went across there and they showed me how to leg kick, front kick, and then use your elbows, first four elbows. And I was sold after that. So I started doing that. So I started kickboxing um, while I was working at the penitentiary. And uh, and that's how it evolved. You know, I just started kickboxing, started amateur. Um, I had no idea it was going to ever turn into MMA because MMA was, you know, extreme fighting, which was crazy. And nobody yeah, it was, it was, still, it was still new. Yeah, it was still yeah. new. No one yeah, knew. that's 95, 96, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, while I was working out there, um, Kit Coke was a professional fighter and he was doing that, doing it. He was already pro and I was amateur, you know, so I, they used to just beat up on me because I'm just a big buff ex-football player that's learning how to kickbox, but they were already pros, you know, um, Melcher Menor, then uh, uh, Ben Garcia, Rath White, uh, guys and uh you know and they speed up on me and stuff like this but i could take it because i was a big guy coming from mm -hmm. football and then i eventually had to learn how to transition from playing football to learn how to do muay thai kickboxing and then um one day i had a fight an amateur fight that i thought was amateur um also taking fights and the teacher was telling me that they were amateur, but they were actually pro. Damn. I was actually fighting professional Muay Thai, and I was winning. And then I, I cut from heavyweight, was like 215 down to 195 or 98. Okay. And I fought this guy, but it was a five, three-minute round fight. And I ended up losing a de uh, decision, and Terry Trebekot from King of the Cage was there, and he was with Kit Cope. He said, man, he said, I wish, he said, I would love to have that guy fight with me. He said, if he, just if he had any wrestling and Kit Coke was like, oh, he was a state <laughs> champion wrestler. So he was like, oh, wow, for real? He's like, man. So then he proposed to me, whatever. And I talked to him. He said, uh, too bad you lost the fight, you know, but at least you got paid for it. And I was like, what? I didn't get paid for this fight. He was like, and I was a pro fighter. I said, man, it's amateur. I said, no, that's pro. My, my teacher was telling me the fights were amateur, uh -huh. but they were pro and he was taking the money. Oh, damn. So I had had like six or seven fights and I was winning these fights. But when the promoters would call me, he would, I would tell them somebody called me, said, oh, don't, don't talk to him. You tell him to call me. Uh -huh. So they would, he would negotiate the fight keep the money and then he'd give me a hundred or two hundred dollars for gas money because I was driving to the fight. Wow. So I didn't even know they were pro. That's I know nuts. yeah not my my that not that, that's the owner of the gym, not the main trainer. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, I had fought like nine or ten times and was I won all my fights, but I was just happy getting a hundred or two hundred dollars for gas yeah. money. And I, I was going to ask you the the next question I was actually going to ask you was like was that like me, maybe his mental game so like you didn't like trick yourself out, like being like, "Oh man, I'm fighting a pro fighter." But never mind, you answered your own my own my question, man. Damn, he took the money. And and... No, damn, He's taking the money. So, so finally, when Kit came to me and offered me to fight for MMA, um, I was like, "Yeah, cool, I'll take it, no problem." So I went to the first MMA fight 
it was on Saboba uh, on the reservation. And uh, I went there and they paid me 500 bucks, but the opponent didn't show up. So I got the $500 and I had to give 25% of that to, the, to my teacher. Mm. And um, so then 25% of 500 bucks, I'm like, okay, not a big deal. But then the next fight came again and I was like, working with John Lewis and because he was the only MMA gym in, in Vegas at the time. And uh, he said he knew about the MMA and stuff. So it was like, uh, look, I'll, I'll manage you with the MMA. Let them manage you with the kickboxing. And he was, the teacher was mad. So, so when I told him that, he was like, isolate me, put it to the side like this. And then like the next week, kicked me out the gym. Wow. He's like, forget it. You want to do it on your own. You do it by yourself. So I said, okay. So I did my thing and John Lewis took over for me. So, um, uh, but in the next fight, well, no, it was right at the time. The next fight was Rampage. So I, I, I had a buy the first fight. So it's kind of counts because of, it, it does and it doesn't. They don't show it on my record, but it gave me, the, they paid me and gave me a trophy. So the next fight, I don't know who Rampage is. But he had already had five fights. Yep. So I just kickboxed him. Just just straight pure kickboxing, no MMA, no nothing. I didn't know anything. Just but I just had a wrestling background. So you know, he tried to take me down. He can't take me down because I'm a wrestler just by yeah. heart. So and I ended up mounting him and just, ground and pound and stuff like this, but I didn't know anything. So I was just going off just pure wrestling instinct and the Muay Thai. And, so, and that was Rampage's debut, right? For King of the King. Oh, Rampage. No, Rampage had no. already had five fights. Oh, he did? Yeah, he fought. He had just fought Mike Powell. Um, okay. In, in Tennessee, he, Rampage was 4-0 when he fought okay. me. So it was, my, it was my, my official debut. So, I mean, I didn't know who he was. I just was going off straight Muay Thai instinct. And, uh, and I had been doing Muay Thai for four and a half years, five okay. years. So, um, so I had that. But I, I was... You know, I started wrestling at seven, so mm -hmm. so you know, just taking me down. I haven't, I, I've been taken down one time in forty fights uh, as a as an MMA fighter, and that was by um, the guy cheated. It was a uh, Ricardo Arona. He pulled my shorts down. Ricardo Arona, I remember, I remember, I remember. <laughs> So he couldn't get me down just by a takedown. He actually, you know, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Anyway, I know. So. Carter Rola, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. I forgot about that one. Um, yeah, with the now that I was I was confusing what 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 happened was I was confusing, uh, Rampage's debut and the UFC is when you he had his first debut with you, correct? Yes, yes, yeah, that's yes. What was, that was. Yeah, uh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he beat me the second time. Um, the one, th you know, fair is fair. You know, the one thing about when you fight Rampage. If you see my first fight, you fight him and move. You don't stand there and trade because that's his style. If you see my first fight, I leg kick him, I attacked him, and I move. I took him down. I move, move, move. That's the way you fight a guy who's isolated. Well, the second time I fought him, that wasn't the game plan. I, you know, I sat there in the middle and I traded, which is stupid because I didn't use any leg kicks. So it's like having two Mike Tysons. It's like basically who's going to win, whoever lands the punch. Yeah. Well, the first fight, I leg kicked him, leg kicked him, move him, attacked him, elbows, took him down. That's how you fight. If you fight, if you see Rampage against Rashad, mm -hmm. when you're Rashad, that's how you fight Rampage. Yeah. That's the that's the game plan. You attack him, boom, 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 boom you double him, take him down, you overwhelm him. That, that's how you beat him. You don't, you don't, stand in front of a brawler and fought him and that's stupid so you know i won i lost i mean i lost the fight fair and square but you know it's part of the game i, I could take a anybody if you ever see mike tyson fight well mike tyson won fair and square he never made excuses oh this, exactly he beat me yep. but there's a, oh well this happened and that happened after that no no, no. yeah you know i mean just just chalk it up to the game yeah and i heard you talking about uh detour you know that it's only two fights in my career that haunt me 
Okay. Uh, two fights that I, if everything else will say it's fair, you know, whatever. I take it back. Three fights. Detour because I was on a three fight knockout streak before mm-hmm. I, I signed with the UFC to take that fight. That was a title eliminator. It was me against Vitor, Chuck against uh, uh, Randy Couture. I mean, Chuck Liddell against Randy Couture. Yep. So whoever won those fights would fight for the belt. Chuck lost, I lost. Yep, and he fought and Vitor found him, yep. No, no excuses, but, but the reason why I said that fight, not because of the cut, because of the loss, it haunts me because I was on a three-fight lockout streak, and the UFC had been trying to get me to sign with them for a year and a half. And I wouldn't do it because I was managed by John Lewis. John Lewis and Chuck are best friends. Okay. And we all train together. Me, Tito, and Chuck, we train together. So John is managing me. Chuck is John's best friend. And Tito trains there. So guess what? He's managing me. This is his best friend. Guess what? We're all 205. Yeah. We all train in the same <laughs> gym. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So he said, I'm keeping you out of this organization because I don't want you to have to fight my friends and I'm managing you. Why do you think Tito and Chuck got into it? Because, because they were friends. Partners. Yep. And they trained together. And eventually, they're going to have to fight each other. What do you think happened? I can show you footage. Mm-hmm. Me and Chuck and Tito, you look on my Instagram page, you can see me, all of us together, and Big Bear helping Tito train when he had the belt. Mm-hmm. We're all together. We trained together. That was why he kept me out of that organization. He kept me in his organization and Chuck. And eventually, Tito ain't going to stand it back. I see DC, man. I, I, Chuck ain't going to stand it back. He's going to say, Dude, I want to fight for this title. So now we're friends. Now we're going to have to be frenemies. You dig yeah, what I'm saying? I so, get you. I get you. So anyway, um, but make a long story short, um, I worked at the police department here in North Las Vegas. And uh, just I, I found out something the week of the fight that no man should should want to find out before they fight. It's just, uh, I, I found out some, some real terrible, terrible news that no man would want to fight like that. You know, you just, the, the, it was some infidelity stuff going on. It oh, okay. didn't have nothing to do with me. You okay. dig what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess. It wasn't my wife. It was my, it was my kid's mother at the time. Okay. So, and, uh, I just was a zombie. I was, you know, you see, if you look, you see the cut, it's not even bleeding. I'm just sitting there just going it like. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was the cleanest, again, it was the cleanest cut ever because, again, there was no, it was no gushing over your eye. There was no blood. It was just a flat. It was just. Just open. Gash. Yeah, it was just open. And I had, I, I, I found out that. I found out that uh, somebody at my my, my department was oh. in, in a in a relationship with my with with my uh, fiance at the at the same place where we work. Wow, you understand? Yo, man, he was my he was my boss. Shit, my sergeant. Wow. So I'm an officer, she's an officer, the sergeant. So, and then I got to go back to work and face all of them after you find out. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. You know, you don't fight for a title, you know, knowing that your old lady is, yeah, you know, screwing your boss and you guys work together and they all in front of you at the same time, dude. I was. Well, that, that shows, like, with, like, the fighter mentality and stuff like that. I mean, not only just to be focused in, in training, because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, he wasn't focused or the fighter wasn't focused. That's why they lost the fight. But there's, like, 
again, outside, I think I've talked to people before, like outside of being a fighter, relationship with people in general it has to be good because that kind of, that will affect your fighting as well. Again, relationship with your family. I mean, it, I mean, look, that's crazy though, man. I'm still like, damn, your, your stories are intense right now. I need some water, bro. Cause <laughs> how did you not kick his ass? <laughs> I, I could tell you this. I, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I'm not one of them only on Sundays, Christian. I live my life like that. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't cuss. I don't, you know, I'm, I've been married to my wife for 16 years. My wife, wife, you know, yes, yes. not my kid's <laughs> no. mother. Uh -huh. um, but I retired from the police department. But um, I can tell you this. If, and I'm just being truthful, if I, um, if I wasn't a Christian, I, I, I would have been in prison for double murder. Cause that's where I was afterward. Yeah. Because when I found out, shit. But imagine when you have to go back to work and you see the perpetrator every day, every day, and they don't separate you. When you have a situation like that, first thing that they're supposed to do when you report it. They separate, separate you from yep. your accuser. They didn't do that. I had to stay supervised by this guy for six months. Finally, when uh, the personnel found out, oh my God, this is going on. This is a lawsuit waiting to happen. They finally separated him from us because she worked there and so did I. Mm -hmm. We both worked together at the police department and this is our supervisor. So how do you do your job looking at the guy yeah. And because I, I totally, I don't drink, but I try to get my mind off of it so much that I end up drinking about two or three uh, Long Island iced teas and just trying to get my mind, but it just kept coming up. And finally, I just made the decision. I'm like, I'm about to kill them both. I'm about to commit double murder. But I got kids. Mm -hmm. I got, I got, a, I got two sons and a stepdaughter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. And then you got to think about this. I mean, do you realize to this day, when somebody gets a cut, you know what Joe Rogan still does? What? Oh, that cut is not as bad as Marvin Beast was cut. Oh, that was the worst cut. Don't you know how many times I have to have people on the street to go, they come up to me and they go, let me see your face. They're waiting for a keloid to be on my face. They'll come up and touch my face. And really? Still to this day, I promise. When Alistair Overeem got his lips split open, Mm -hmm. You know what Joe, Joe Rogan said? Oh, that's a bad cut. That's not as bad as Marvin Eastman. Oh, that was the worst cut I've ever seen. I'm still living that thing since 2003. Wow. Imagine this. The first UFC game that came out, I went with my kid to buy it. I opened it up. Guess whose picture was in there in that UFC video game? My picture with the cut. And me and my kid looked at this and he got pissed off. I'm not buying that game. It's a game. It's just like, so it doesn't bother me now. But because it's been 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. But I, every time somebody gets a cut, dude, I had a dude on Instagram the other day. I mean, like, really? Send me the picture. Like, dude, you, what am I supposed to say? Oh, that's a nice picture. I mean, yeah. literally, like, he, he sent it to me. And I opened it up and I looked and I was like, really? I'm mean, like, yeah. what did you expect me to say? That's a great picture. That's yeah. a nice, awesome picture. I'm like, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I don't get mad because I'm way, it's, come on, it happened 16 years ago, but I'm still being reminded of that cut, not anybody having any idea. And I guess it's my fault because I should have never went into the fight with that mentality. But what I'm supposed to do, pull out of yeah. a championship, you know, for me, potentially fighting for a UFC belt? Come on. No way in the world. And then my pay jumps up to the six figures from five figures to six figures? Hell no. I would regret that all my life if I never took that fight, even by losing. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It was part of the game.
Well, you know what? Well, I'm glad that you talked about it. And now that, you know, the viewers and people that will see that fight and remember again, like I said, that's almost the very first thing I, I talked to you when I said, I go, I remember the cut, man. Cause I remember that was one of the very first UFCs that I watched. And I'm like, I would probably never do that again. Cause that shit looked scary. So again, I apologize for bringing it up. Let me tell you something. It doesn't bother me. You know, when something bothers you, that means you haven't got over it. Absolutely. I, I, pe- I mean, people walk up to me and they'll touch my face and That's try to crazy. figure out where it's at. And they go, did you get plastic surgery? I'm like, no. <laughs> I just, I, I'm lucky, man. My, my, on my mom's side of the family, they got great skin. All these like uh, baby booties. And, uh, mm-hmm. So I just healed up and aloe vera and like people even look and they don't even think I'm a, they don't even think I'm a wrestler because they don't, I don't have the ears. cauliflower ears. You know why? Because I'm never on my back. I always put other people on their back. Even in jujitsu, I got, I got a, I got my, 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 my belt is a Nova Unia belt. Same as uh, uh, um, Aldo. Um, that's that's my camp. I got All I have to do is go up and show up and get a black belt. I've been a brown belt since 2000, 2002. It's not a big deal to me, but. No cauliflower ear. You good, man. <laughs> That's what people do. I don't have no cauliflower ear, like I said, because I'm usually on top. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking smack, but. Yeah. I mean, no, hey, so. it, I mean, it It shows. I mean, it proves. I mean, people know why you get cauliflower ear. That's perfect. I didn't, you know, I didn't even notice that, to be honest. You're all like, damn. Yeah. No, you're right, man. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> I know I talk a lot, man. Hey, man. Hey. You know what? This, this again, like I told you before, this podcast is not for me, man. This is this is for the viewers and for you. This is again, um, what you did for the sport, all the fights and stuff. I mean, uh, I mean, I've talked to a couple of my friends. I'm like, hey, do you remember Marvin Eastman? And they're like, oh yeah, the Beast Man. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have him on, and and people still st- still remember you as a fighter. So again, I like paying homage, especially to uh, the past fighters, because a, a lot of them don't have like an outlet to to talk and stuff and to explain, yeah. like you said, your stories and stuff. And damn, yeah. between the cop story and then, and then the, the guy taking your money, that's wild, man. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Dude. Imagine this. When I told you, I said the three fights that I regret. Yeah. For some reason, I just, I had a, one thing that I regret is I never really got opportunity to showcase really what I could do on the mainstream TV, which was the UFC. If you watch on my, any of my other fights and my other shows, HD Net, all those kind of stuff, I got fights that are devastating. Just like, damn, if I had this fight on this show, it would have been... Would have propelled you. But, oh, my God. But for some reason, I just had a jinx on the UFC. The, the first fight was with the with, the with Vitor. Vitor. Mm-hmm. Then, I'm telling you, if you think... I don't have the baddest luck in the UFC. Then I come back and they give me, I'm training with Tito. Me and Tito are training because he's supposed to fight Guy Metzger, right? We're mm-hmm. training in Vegas together. We, me and Tito train together for six weeks, okay? We're doing this drill called a 21, which it has six guys in a cage and you have a different person comes with you every six minutes and you have a one minute break. We're okay. doing this, doing this. So we're training, we're training, we're training. They put bodies in there so you can have people to go with. One dude's a wrestler, one dude's a kickboxer, one dude's a boxer, one dude's a submission guy. So you're on your back, you're up against the cage, whatever. They put a guy in there for body. The guy pushes me up against the cage. I back off the cage. He comes up. I shoot on him. The dude kicks his leg up against the, the cage. Mm-hmm. Knees me in the face. Knocks me out. Pull out. Knocked out. It was an accident. They wake me up. I get up. Five minutes later, we finish training, right? Mm-hmm. The next day, me and Tito are doing wrestling. Just takedowns, takedowns, takedown defense. Double leg. I'm taking Tito down, taking him down. He ain't nothing, you know. I'm double leg. I'm taking him down, taking him down, taking him down. Now, he said, yeah, Tito takes him right my initiation to starting the gym was 
I had to do takedowns with Chuck, Tito, uh, Souza, uh, Mark Lehman, Eric Pele. That's how I get introduced. It was takedowns. Damn. I don't know these guys taking them down, taking them down. That's how I got introduced. So I'm doing it. I'm taking them down, taking them down. Tito got get got tired of getting taken down, and he jumped guard. Mm. If you know what I'm talking about, jump yep. guard. When you if he jumps guard when I'm shooting, what's gonna happen? Oh, you're gonna go fall. Oh, I shot on him and he jumped guard. Now remember the day before I just got kneed in the head. Mm -hmm. Tito knees me in the face. You can ask him. Knocked out again. Twice in wow in a week. Jesus Christ. And I went to the fight. So. We train, we finished training. I got a concussion. Don't even know it. Now, Guy Metzger finds out that he has a heart murmur and he funks his, his funks his physical. So you'll see calls John Lewis and says, we might have to might Marvin and Tito fight. He said, dude, they've been training together. They can't fight each other. Mm -hmm. So they find Patrick Cote. Give Tito, Patrick Cote, and then they give me uh, Luter. Travis Luter. Yep. I go into the fight. I'm fighting it. Get a double leg and take him down. Easy fight. People thought I took, took a dive because when he threw his little touch, oh, dirty touch me. Now, they can't figure out. I said, God damn, Eastman got a. Now, remember, I just took a knee to the face and didn't knock me out. I would have weak punching Travis Luter mm -hmm. knock me out. I go into the fight with a concussion, don't even know it. So when you use, look at the fight, it looks it looks like it barely touched me. It looked like it was on TV, like a TV punch. Yep. Barely touches me. I slept. God damn. And I had no idea. So I get finished and I go in and say, God damn. I see swelling on my brain. Not for the fight, they see swelling on my brain that they said that was already there. So they suspend me for six months after I'm suspended in New Jersey and I'm suspended in Vegas. Six months after come back and get tests to make sure that I have no swelling because they suspend you once that you suspend it all the way. So mm -hmm. finally I get it to test. Then they finally say, okay, you're, you're, you're cleared. No problem. Two fights, two bad luck. Third fight. Rampage, Rampage again. Jackson. Now, that was the only one that was fair. Iron Square, he beats me. Take Rampage one. Then I fight uh, Terry Martin. First time that I actually got to go and do my thing without no problem. Beat him up, whole nine years, win the fight. Last fight on the contract, we asked to re, re up. Win the next fight, we'll sign another five fight deal. No problem. Easy fight. Um, I can't remember the dude's name. I go down to 85. First punch. You know the John John Jones stick your fingers out like this? Mm -hmm. The eye poke. Left eye. Sticks his finger in my eye. Tears my retina. Mm. If you know anybody with a torn retina, what it looks like, it looks like you got a blanket that somebody keeps doing like this over your eye. Okay. Because the light reflects and then it comes back. But the what happens is the retina falls over your cornea, so it blocks your vision. Gotcha. So you'll go like this, and it looks like Oof. sticks his finger in my eye, tears my retina. Hold the lights are out, nothing, and um, gets to the side of my head, and he's socking me in the side of the face. I can't see anything. I can't fight. First, first fingers, but they he was doing this fingers out. Mm -hmm. So instead of signing a new deal, I get cut. God damn, I have the worst luck. But then I go and I fight in any other organization. I destroy all out. But for some reason, you'll see in me just was just, it's just the most. And the crazy thing about it is, remember, I work at the police department. I'm an officer for 20 some years. I don't get to take a break. Guess what I got to do? I got to go back to work. So when I had that cut on my face and all these stitches, Mm -hmm. These inmates and the people that I arrest, 
Hey, look at my face, and I got cuts, and I got all this stuff on my face. I don't get to go take a week or two weeks off. I got to go back to work, bro. When those do, when I go train, work nine o'clock, get off at seven, have to be at the gym at eleven to train jujitsu, then have to drive to UNLV at three o'clock, three o'clock to five o'clock to box and condition. Then I leave there at five o'clock, drive to Master Tati. 6.30 to 8, training uh, Muay Thai, leave there, come home, take a shower, go to work at 9 o'clock. So Damn. three sessions a day plus training, plus I work a full-time job, 9 to 7. I did that for 11 straight years. Wow. And I coach wrestling for my kid. My re we had a, a national championship uh, wrestling team here uh, um, called the Mojave Rattlers. That was a freestyle, so I'm coaching my kids too. So no break. I'm not making no excuses. I had a full time job. You dig what I'm saying? I'm retired. I got a I got a pension now. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? But a lot of the guys, it wasn't no millions of dollars. It was hundreds of thousands. Yeah, it was almost like 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 you said, like it was just another job. There you had to go and, and still make the the even though you fought, it wasn't not like now now where you can fight and not work because exactly. you're good. Back exactly. in the day, you had to work and bust your ass. Exactly. It's a different, you know, it's, and again, it's a different type of, it's a different type of, the fighters nowadays are different from the ones back in the day as well. I think. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. I was making $100,000 at my job, but, and you know, you make fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 fighting on the side. Well, you know, you get a fight, you'll see you fight Ram, Rampage at $50,000. Well, if I'm making 100000 at my job and I make fifty dollars off him and I'm that's still hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on the side, mm -hmm. but there wasn't no. They barely started those bonuses, the six minutes, those kind of yeah. uh, knockout bonus. They barely started at mid mid two thousand five, two thousand six. They barely started that. So I, I think it was like right after like the Ultimate Fighter, like season one. Yeah, they started. Yeah. So you know, if you could go for that, that's that's lovely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. come on, we talking about ten and twelve thousand dollar purses, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand come on man my biggest purse for 50 you dig what i'm saying mm -hmm. so these cats is making that that's nothing and complaining <laughs> and complaining about it real talk <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so, imagine you know, they got paid 20 20 grand and then, and then they complain and they're they're making like 60 70 and they're complaining shit yeah. and then there wasn't no reebok contracts and stuff you yeah. had this sponsorship, this sponsorship. So you could make ten or fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars with sponsorship. Mm -hmm. But imagine when you're only getting two and three thousand dollars in your Reebok money, because that Reebok contract is per fight. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> if you don't, if it's a big incentive to go knock somebody out, so you can make forty, fifty thousand dollars, eighty thousand, a hundred thousand, you make more money off of the bonuses than you do off the purses. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so why do you think I worked? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now I got a pension that comes every month regardless. You dig what I'm saying? So it's a lot of cats that don't have that that fought like me that's still scrambling because it ain't because their money ain't it ain't if you don't have something else and you didn't keep no money, you're stuck, bro. Yeah. You know I mean, I, I think a lot of fighters nowadays too, especially um um, hopefully, I mean, they, they, they've learned their lessons, but I, I know there's, there's certain fighters that have that mentality that they think they're going to be like a, a GSP, a Chuck Liddell, and make that type of money, retire, and be good and not have to work or do anything like that. But I, I know several fighters that, you know, yeah. not that they weren't good with their money, yeah, but yeah. just, you know, they had just yeah. enough for to yeah. eat, and they're, yeah. now they're still working and stuff. Oh, like yeah. So it's, yeah. It's Believe crazy. Me. I, I, I totally understand it. It's unfortunate because I had an individual that I know, and I ain't gonna put him out there. Rap right with me, and he was like, Hey, man, uh, you got any hookup on the correction stuff? And I'm like, Yeah, well, you could do this, but think about it. I started out, I, I, I became an officer at 25. Well, I retired at 47. So I've been retired a couple of years now. But I worked for 25 years to so I could have retirement. Can you imagine starting out now? Yeah, no. Absolutely. 47, 48, trying to do 
No. You dig what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, those, I don't know, man, you know, but, but the guys, the fighters that I have right now, the, the kids that I got, I got one really special guy that I'm training that from, from day one. And if I can get my kid to get his butt, his head out of his butt, then he could be something ridiculous too. But uh, the one that I got right now, his name is uh, K.O. Jordan. Okay. Knockout. I gave him that name because amateur, he went 15 and one. Wow. And then he started out in pro and uh, he had a couple of messed up decisions and his record was off. And then started discounting him and we went back to the drawing board knockout street because he was just sleeping with everybody and then nobody went to fight him so we having a hard time getting fights because it ain't no one two three it's been those mike tyson i mean if i show you video it's been sleepers pow going to sleep that's why like i said i nicknamed him either commit you or he knock you out and uh so it's very, very hard right now because we're trying to get the first couple of losses off there because mm -hmm. for a while everybody was discounting him. And then That's all of a sudden, record. yeah, but then they go and he's sleeping them. So we went back to the drum board. So now we're at eight and four because we lost a couple of decisions. The reason why we did that is it was my fault because he's a 55 pounder. And a couple of times, you know, in amateurs, they'll come overweight and suddenly we want to fight so bad. Mm -hmm. Well, if the guy is, supposed to fight at 50 and he comes in at 65 you know he's really coming from 75 or 80 so well, we'll give you 580 dollars if you take the fight okay and what do i do we want to fight so bad because we train and we let him end up taking the fight and end up like you don't make weight and we don't fight yeah so that was my fault on two fights that he took that he shouldn't have done because i i'm the manager i'm the trainer and i let him take those fights so so it we had to re-catch up. But then as soon as he started getting some momentum, then people it. look at the record and go, okay, we'll yep. take the fight. And then he knocks him out. They're going, we don't want to fight this guy. So <laughs> we're trying to get contender, Bellator, something consistent now. But then COVID messed everything up. So now it's very, very hard. Yeah. But right there, he's like eight and four. Uh, trying to get over that hump, nine, ten, just any old fight just to get in there so we can get him a because two of his two of his stable mates just that's the same weight this this got on contenders and they're they're mm -hmm. fighting in the UFC now and they're his training partner you know what I'm saying oh, so okay. I got you you know so anyway I know you you dictate this conversation I, I'm I'm, hey, man, I, I'm here I'm in here to enjoy the ride brother man you can go wherever you want man as long as you don't go political I don't give a shit uh, where you go man uh, we're, we're good. good. But uh, I just I just want to say uh, I want I want to thank you, man, for uh, for for joining me and and talking uh, you know about your past and 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 being such a great fighter and, and a great person, man. I again a lot of people wouldn't not that they assume that you're but again you're jacked you're big jacked you know they're like oh shit this guy's a, he's just like a killer but you're you're really uh, a really nice guy, man. And, and I had a pleasure of, of having you on, man. It's been an honor. And thank you for everything you did uh, inside the cage and outside, man. Appreciate it, man. Like I said, for me, um, I'm 51. I still, I still train with my guys. Um, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't use drugs. Um, you know, and that's one of the things you always get, whatever. You know, but if, if you get a chance got this uh um and right before we got out of there they did the uh flex magazine did an article called uh 10 top 10 bodies in the ufc uh-huh and uh they had us all ranked from from 10 down to one right and um it's a trip because if they went back and did a recap to see how the people look now versus when they did this nice, article. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would, and, and you know, you you it would be tripped out just to see the transformation. Like I said, I'm 51, so they they don't 
you know, they, they don't, they have no idea. <laughs> don't look like, oh, you're 36 one. You know, but that's a good old mama and dad, man. And, and no, none of that other garbage. Like I said, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I never have, that's never did, good, took drugs, never did. None of the only thing I've ever got, about the worst you're going to ever get from me is, uh, them two old Long Island iced teas when I was going to go on <laughs> back then. And, <laughs> and, and that stuff they put you to sleep with, with when you go, when they, when you, when you have surgery, man, you know? So, mm. and I'm okay with that. Like I said, people don't say what they want to say and that's all right. You know, but, but I appreciate the love. I appreciate the, uh, you know, the, the, the call, man. It's, it's awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. No, no problem. Again, uh, I appreciate everything that you did, man. I hope you have a good rest of your day, man. And God bless brother. All right. Yeah. Man, you got my number. Get at me anytime, okay? Definitely, brother.